Hello, and welcome to this edition of Table Topics RE. I am Stacy Harmon. I'm Bob Watson. I'm Scott Shane. And we just did our SMMOC meeting, and this is our recap about the topics and takeaways from this meeting that are really, uh, we think, are useful for the real estate space. So, very lively discussion today, big group, and uh, no surprise, Google Plus came up today, which is the big announcement of this week. And I'm trying to distill it down to how this is exactly going to help a real estate professional right now. And I think the main takeaway was that it's still so new and so few people on there that unless you're really social media progressive um, or very, very ultimately curious about this channel and have maybe a big national network, there may not be immediate business value, especially because there's not a... Uh, a business leg of it yet, which is coming. That's a future release. I don't know if you all agree. Or... I, I totally agree that a real estate agents should really focus right now on their business. And this shiny object, as Scott uh, likes to call it, uh, is probably not something you want to be on right away unless you are uh, pretty into the social media scene. As a, as a social networking tool, they've absolutely introduced some um, a different level of intuition and a different way to communicate with small groups, but uh, like what Bill Loveland mentioned today, if your friends aren't on it, if the people that you're talking to aren't on it, don't worry about it. But one of the things that I did really notice about it is your Google profile is now more important than ever. Right. That's so if your, if your free Google profile is not completely filled out with all of your interests, all your likes, all your links, all of your links, all of that stuff now shows up. So as Google Plus is pushing this, and they're getting a lot of buzz, and they've absolutely done some innovative things that it's gonna get a lot of traction and a lot of noise. The one feature though that people thought was very interesting and yep. having some value right now, if you are gonna embrace it, at the minimum, do your profile filled out, but the, uh, the meet, what is it called? Huddles? Not huddles, yep. the um, hangouts. 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 So the video group chat was a really effective feature that might help you in communicating with other members of your, your team right. or your clients. Your so that clients, was some absolutely. of the takeaways that you could explore right now if you're going to get involved in Google+. Plus. We're certainly watching it and we'll see what happens, but it's still really, really early. The real estaters, hold off on it for right now. <laughs> it's, it's a shiny object still, but there may be some merit. We'll update you as we see those things come around. Yeah. Uh, so the two things, the Google profile is really important. Have a really robust Google profile out there. You don't have to be on Google+. Plus. Just get your Google profile. And I use uh, LinkedIn very effectively as my online hub, www.robertwatson.com. It's been extremely effective for me, and I highly suggest that every real estate professional have a LinkedIn profile, which is extremely robust, because your clients are professionals that are on LinkedIn. And so when they're using that social channel, they are going on LinkedIn to see if you are on it. That was a big topic today. Huge. We were talking about recruiting and job searches through social media, and LinkedIn came up, and you mentioned that all all real estate professionals really should be there, uh, and it has right. it should be one of your spokes, if not your Absolutely. hub, as as Bob uses it as his hub. There's no reason that you can't have that per, uh, professional yeah. presence online, and it can be very easy to set up in a yeah. short period of time. Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Twitter. All of those. Okay, and then we had a really great discussion uh, about these bullet points here on the okay. board, which was if you are, we had people stand up in the room who said, look, I love this discussion, but I am new to social media. What is it that I need to know to really get started effectively with social media? And it led to a discussion about social media etiquette. And certainly if you're a real estate agent or real mortgage professional or anyone in the industry, these are good tools for you to know. And so and it's called just kind of go social through. protocol. What's, what are, and so we had a group discussion about that and these are the things that came up. Well, present yourself as if you were in person. So uh, if I was meeting Scott for the first time, I would not uh, do certain things that I would be doing online or a lot of people try and do online. Don't talk about yourself. Yeah, don't talk about myself. <laughs> and that's one of the successes that I've had online is I've been in real estate for 24 years. I have never really mentioned that I'm selling real estate or managing real estate agents. And that's something that's given me a lot of uh, equity in our business. Uh, people come up to me and say, you know what, you never really tried to recruit me. You never really tried to sell me a house. And that's why I want to work with you. So, and then we talked about engaging first, but it actually evolved into listening first. And then once you've listened and heard what's going on there, and I call it lurking, you can, it's okay to lurk online <laughs> when you're beginning with social media, then you can start to actually engage. And engagement's a really effective strategy as opposed to broadcasting. Again, it kind of mirrors what you were hinting at here. 
uh, and heads into number four. It's a great, it's, you know, no pitching. When you're first starting out, you gotta build up some social right. value, some social proof. Uh, broadcasting your listings and your your mortgage rates uh, for or your mortgage services is not gonna no, be most effective. Channel is boring. People tune you out. It's opt-in permission-based and they're gonna unfriend you, defollow you, all of these things. So don't start that way. Any others you want uh, to highlight? Yeah, don't, don't auto-broadcast unless, <laughs> unless your channel is a broadcasting channel. And Eric Stegeman, our friend, uh, had a, a Twitter handle that was actually only broadcasting market data in St. Louis. And it was very clear in the profile that uh, he was broadcasting market data. And so you can have several Twitter profiles, and one of them can be a broadcast. But if it's your personal profile, don't broadcast. Be yourself and connect. And this point also was about don't send the same message to the same channel all at the same time in a mass distribution. So if you have a message that's saying you know, something that you're doing during the day, you know, don't post that to Facebook, have it auto-tweet and have it auto-go to LinkedIn. That's not going to be good etiquette. That's going to be very fruitful for you in your social media. So yeah. any others? Uh, be, be human yeah. uh, came up. Quality, not quality. Yes, that was yours. You had a great point about yeah, that. I, I, the, the relationships that you build online uh, in your social networks, um, strive for higher quality, not higher quantity. You don't want a ton of people. Uh, you want uh, good relationships with a few people. And I'll tell you, yeah, Eric, yeah, I have a little over 5,000 followers. I started on Twitter four years ago. I really have only effectively been using it for two years, but uh, collecting 5,000 followers, and of those people, you know, I would say that I've created good, engaging conversation with a lot of my followers. And, you know, I've met you all, and i met pretty much everybody that comes to Social Media Mastermind on social media channels by delivering quality and not quantity. And then I'll just wrap it up with the last thing, which is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, too, I is include a note. When you friend somebody on Facebook, tell them why you're connecting and what's the benefit to you two connecting. So, um, you know, Bill Lublin visited us today. and contributed that to the conversation. Um, it's a really great tip. You know, what's the value? Don't don't um, pitch to them, but make sure that they know why. And you can do that on LinkedIn and on Facebook. So that's a recap that'll hopefully get you started. Thank you for watching and until the next episode of Table Topics RE, we're out. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.